a contemporary of Michelangelo and Raphael, and like them, was one of the most sought-after artists um, of his time. But it's surprising today that he is actually little known. So he was born sometime around 1485 and started his career in Venice. He may have been taught by Giovanni Bellini and then Giorgione. At around about 1511, he then moved to Rome at the invitation of one of his patrons, Agostini Chigi, and he died in that city in 1547. It's generally thought that Sebastiano painted the Adoration of the Shepherds around about the time that he moved to Rome, mostly because um, of the fusion of Roman and Venetian elements. The Venetian elements you would find in the landscape and the colours, whereas the Roman elements are found in the animated and individuality of the figures that show the influence of Michelangelo. Indeed, by the time Sebastiano had come to move to Rome, Michelangelo had just unveiled the first part of, his, of the ceiling, the Sistine Chapel. So we do not know who commissioned the painting or where it was originally intended to hang. The earliest known record that we have of it was from 1724 when it was in the collection of the Duke de Orleans. When he had it in his collection it was attributed to the artist Giorgione. It remained as Giorgione when Lord Fitzwilliam acquired it in a sale in London in 1800. Then once it came into the museum the attribution was much debated and it wasn't until 1913 that it realised that it was a work by Sebastiano del Piombo. Hamilton Carr is the conservation department of the Fitzwilliam, but it's also the postgraduate education centre for the University of Cambridge in uh, painting conservation. And we do a lot of research as well, uh, staff and students. And we were founded in 1976, so it's our 40th anniversary. We do a great deal of work, paintings from the Fitzwilliam, paintings from other collections, the university, anywhere in Britain in fact, we can take a painting. Uh, we will remove old dirt and varnish, we will make sure it's structurally sound, repair the canvas, repair the panel if it's on wood. Uh, we'll try and find out more about it, that's often what is the most exciting thing, you know, who is it by, when was it done, how does it fit into the um, history of the place where it comes from. So there's a lot of background research as well as work on the surface of the paintings. There aren't many disciplines that do the science and the art, as it were. I mean, you have to have an artistic appreciation and understanding of the history to be a conservator, so often an art historian becomes a conservator or has a background in art history before they start. But you do need to know the science, you need to know why things react as they do. Why does the painting look like it does now? What's changed? Is that something one should address, or is it permanent, or is that part of its history? There's, there's a lot of ethics, actually. And the science, it's not white men in white coats all the time, it's much more observational science. You're looking really hard at the painting. You're probably spending a lot longer with it than the artist ever did. It's a very, very harmonious match between science and art, I feel, and there aren't that many subjects where it's so intimately mixed. Well, it, I mean, the Sebastiano had been a long-term storage for many years because it wasn't displayable. We knew that there was a lot wrong with it. We didn't know exactly what, but going back 20 or 30 years, X-rays and infrareds were taken and it was seen that the painting was massively damaged underneath layers and layers of repaint. So we knew what we were looking at wasn't the original surface at all. And there was a very big question at the time, and it was left for some years, should we even start this treatment? Are we going to be finding such a, a ghost of a painting that it's not worth it? But the trouble was that the repaint really didn't reflect the original in quality or colour or even the forms. What we could discover even before we'd started removing the old repaint and varnish was that the pattern of damage there did not correspond to normal ageing that you might expect. And there was also evidence even before, again, we started treatment, that it had originally been on a wooden panel, but it was now on a canvas. And that strongly suggested that before it arrived at the Fitzwilliam Museum, and probably when it was in the French Royal Collection, it was transferred. And that was a recognised um, treatment in France. The wood of the panel was removed in some way from the paint. The paint was left as a thin film and was re-adhered to a canvas. And the methods for doing that were quite dangerous, I think we could say. We wouldn't do it now. And involved the use of acid to dissolve the ground layer or possibly paring the wood away from the back, having protected the front with some sort of facing. And it looked like it went wrong. It looked like a lot of paint was lost at that time. Don't have the documentary evidence, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that it did happen around 1750 or so. And then the painting was repainted. Obviously, the owner at the time would have wanted to see a painting back on the wall, and it was restored, and then restored again, and restored again. And we ended up with a painting that really did not reflect Sebastiano's skill or his vision. The debate as to whether you can restore something, or rather fill in the losses, I suppose is what I'm trying to say, 
hinged around whether you could be certain what was missing. And uh, to start with, we didn't know whether that was true. Were there enough clues left? Were there little bits of paint that would give us indications? And we started to remove the repaint. We understood how much loss there was, but we did not know how badly the surrounding paint, for example, had been damaged as well. Some of it had, some of it hadn't. The saving feature, the thing that allowed us to restore it confidently, was the fact that a copy exists. It belongs to the Louvre. It predates the damage. It's damaged in its turn, but in a different way. And we could get plenty of information from that that would tell us what was in the missing areas of the painting. Well, the treatment was a very long one. Firstly, just removing layer upon layer of overpaint has to be done incredibly carefully. And some of those layers were very tough and resistant. Fortunately, the original was also um, an aged paint film and it was resilient. So one could very carefully, sometimes under the microscope, remove layer by layer these colours and forms that were completely incorrect. We uncovered the most beautiful ultramarine blue on the Virgin's robe that was green in the repaint. The, all of the sky was different. The, the baby turned out to be very well preserved. And this was the other saving grace that the absolutely vital parts of the composition, the Christ child, uh, the Virgin's face, most of it, and the principal forms of all the main protagonists were still intact. And the biggest losses were fortunately in the background, or rather the foreground on the left, and the Virgin's drapery. Having said that, there were some very tricky bits, like the rest of the Virgin's face, and we had to look carefully at other paintings by Sebastiano, as much as we did at the copy, to come to some way of recreating that in a way that we feel confident about and which doesn't jar the eye for the viewer. And it took probably about five or six years of solid work, um, spread over a longer period, to actually uncover all the original, to make the decisions, to do the research, and then to begin to fill in the losses and slowly, slowly, slowly build up layers that approximated and then got closer and closer to the original. And we ended up with a painting which I hope, now you look at it from a distance, you can understand it as a, as a painting, but if you get close, you can see it's damaged, you can see what's original and what's not. And that's always going to be part of its history. We can't go back. We can't say, why on earth did they do that in the 18th century? We have to live with that, but it certainly does live again now. I mean, it has been a team effort. Several colleagues have worked on it. Um, it has been a large research project. There's been a committee looking at how we go forward. So it's difficult now, 10 years after it was originally first begun as a treatment, and 30 years after we originally looked at it, saying, can this be treated? It's become very much part of our lives here. Um, so to see it go, it's rather sad in a way, but it's going to be wonderful to share that story, to get people's reactions, because we're very used to it now. We understand it. We have a love for it, partly because we know how, how its history has been so, um, so dangerous in some times for, for, for the painting and how it's managed to get through. So to share that story, to see it on the wall for the first time in I don't know how many years, will be a huge sense of achievement. And um, yeah, we're sorry to see it go. The return of the painting to the museum is quite an amazing thing and lots of people will be incredibly happy to see it back here. I think this probably hasn't been seen for before a generation. We will be displaying the work in a specially designed display in our flowers gallery, which is next door to our Italian gallery. So it'll give the visitors the opportunity to see the painting on its own, but also in relation to our Italian paintings, which are just next door, and includes our other masterpiece by Sebastiano del Piombo, Madonna and the Child. So the Adoration Shepherds will be on display from the 8th of June until the end of the year, so there's plenty of time to come and see it.